I've mentioned many times right here on this channel that three to four issues into a miniseries, Tom King is always going to do a character assassination on a side character. And the human target is no different. As you can see, this week he did not assassinate Christopher Chance, but Green Lantern Guy Gardner. Guy Gardner is known for a lot of things. He's a jerk. I call him a little bit of a meathead. Some would say he's a bit rough around the edges. But Tom King himself decided to establish some new character traits about Guy Gardner, specifically that he's an asshole stalker and that he's absolutely insane. Tom King is no stranger to character assassination. We all remember what he did to Mr. Terrific in Strange Adventures recently. Turns out he did not want to have his child and he was relieved to find out that his wife and unborn son were dead. If you remember during his Batman run, he basically sat by and let Joker murder a bride on her wedding day, of course, after the groom was already killed. No consequences whatsoever. Batman essentially does nothing. Afterwards, Joker actually shoots Batman in the head, who then inexplicably actually sits down and has a prayer with the Joker in the, in the chapel on this wedding day. Who could forget Heroes in Crisis and the character assassination of Wally West? where it turns out that Wally West is the killer. He's a mass murderer, had a very tense confession. Now, after they've established that he's the murderer, that he's very sorry for what he did, that's not enough to, that he's dealing with his trauma and apparently has PTSD. He certainly had to be kicked right of the balls by Harley Quinn. And then, of course, the coup de grace of Ford's character assassination on Wally West. He had his best friends. They can't even look at him as they're arresting him and taking him away because he has killed so many people. I did not forget the original Sid of Tom King, or at least the one that really got people talking about what a terrible writer he is. It is Darkseid himself eating from a veggie tray, basically gelding the character right then and there. As you can see, Tom King is the man behind character assassination at DC Comics. He's been doing this for several years now. He cannot contain himself. Is it because he's trouble? Is it because he has PTSD himself? I don't know. Does he have mommy issues? That's none of my concern. But I am sick and tired of him destroying DC Comics heroes and characters that he had nothing to do with creating or any of the legacy that had made the characters iconic to this day. At this point, Tom King is essentially M. Night Shyamalan himself. He can't not do the exact same story over and over and over and over again. Now, of course, we did see recently Tom King did he kind of promised that maybe he had changed his stripes, that he had learned some lessons and he was going to start incorporating maybe some action-based storytelling, not focus so much on the trauma of being a superhero and how broken and fractured every single male hero in his comic books are. I'll believe it when I see it and I probably won't see it because at this point, who can even trust Tom King to save himself from himself? Nobody that reads DC Comics at this point, if you go into a Tom King book, and you're not expecting whatever heroes that you like, or maybe you're hearing you didn't even expect to be in there. If you don't expect him to destroy them whole cloth, you have not been paying attention to Tom King and what he's done within DC Comics as of late. Now, this week, it is in Human Target. As I mentioned, it is the aforementioned Guy Gardner. Guy Gardner is many things. He is a flawed hero. There's no doubt about that. He has been knocked the fuck out by Batman a couple of times, I believe. And he deserved it, in my opinion. He's a jerk. He's a meathead. He does not always say the right thing when he should say it. Sometimes he can come off as downright obnoxious. I think we can all admit that about the character. And that is probably one of the lovable aspects of the character that makes him unique within the universe. But one thing he isn't is absolutely insane and jealous. And that is what Tom King has done to Guy Gardner in this comic book. He is essentially a stalker now because we do have the main character, Christopher Chance, working in conjunction with his ex, Ice who has been resurrected. And as far as the story around this, it's perfectly fine. If you're enjoying the human target, this is probably a pretty decent episode, except for what he does to Guy Gardner. Why does he need to destroy Guy Gardner in the story? Does it make Tom King feel more like a man when he gets to tear down all these heroic characters, all these heroic archetypes to his level? I'm not sure. But here's the, the proof is in the pudding. I do have the bona fides, so you can see for yourself. Just the way that he characterizes Guy Gardner. And just wait till I get to the end, because the worst part is what happens when Hal Jordan shows up. The Guy Gardner portion of the human target number three, which is beautifully illustrated by Greg Smallwood, by the way, is Guy is stalking his ex, Ice, who's been returned from the dead. He's very upset that she's working with Christopher Chance 
who is the human target and who only has, I believe, nine days left to live in this current uh, comic book. And he's threatening using his ring. He's misusing his authority as a, as a Green Lantern, tracking down Christopher Chance, threatening him. And when he doesn't hear what he wants to hear, he ends up using the ring to beat him to a bloody pulp. I bet he stalks her in four to five scenes within this comic book. She tells him to leak, go away, and he won't take no for an answer. Has that ever been in the DNA of Guy Gardner as a character? I certainly don't remember that, but that is the Guy Gardner that you're going to get from Tom King, who absolutely hates male superheroes. And the coup de gras, I mentioned it earlier. Christopher Chance says that Guy Gardner has a kryptonite. He has one thing he's absolutely afraid of. When Hal Jordan arrives, he essentially pisses himself. Oh, yes, sir. No, sir. What could I do for you, sir? But he was talking to my girlfriend, sir. And he's so petrified of Hal Jordan that he immediately gives up his power ring and lets Christopher Chance get a sucker punch hit on him. I remember Guy Gardner having a healthy respect for for Hal Jordan, but I don't ever remember being afraid of him. But that is the characterization that he gets within this comic book. As I've said before, Tom King is an absolute hack. At this point, it's no longer his fault. This is DC Comics' fault. It's Jim Lee's fault. It's Marie Javin's fault. It's Daniel Cherry III's fault. It's the editorial staff's fault. They cannot let him run roughshod and destroy these characters every single time he has a miniseries. Yet, they continuously give him these important books. We know that he's got a Batman series once again coming up. How many times does he need to destroy the Batman? He got 85 issues to ruin Batman, and he did. And now he's on issue 9 of Batman Catwoman, and he's destroyed the character. And now he's got another Batman series to destroy him some more. I don't understand why this hack gets so many chances. Does he have some dirt on Jim Lee? Does, is there something that he's holding over the executives at DC Comics? Why do they continuously allow him to do this? Look at what he did to the sales of Batman. Sales of Batman hadn't been that low in years when that happened. As soon as they moved him off the title, it spiked right back up to where it was before because people have tuned out to Tom King. People have realized he's no longer the writer that got the Batman gig off of his work on Vision, which was absolutely extraordinary. He's no longer the writer doing the Sheriff of Babylon. He is a shell of himself. He is a broken man. He's a broken creator at this point. Why DC Comics can't learn their lessons, look out not only for their characters and their universe, why can't they look out for their customers? I don't think this is quite as bad as being relieved that your wife died with your unborn child because you weren't ready to be a father. I don't think this is quite as bad as turning Wally West, the, the symbol of hope during DC Rebirth, into a mass murderer. But this is pretty bad. This is taking a creation, a character, somebody's favorite superhero character, and absolutely destroying them, tearing them down to his own level. Nobody wants to read a comic book where Tom King is the central protagonist because he's not interesting and he's not a hero. He is a flawed, broken man, much like you and I and all of us. We all have our faults. And Guy Gardner does too, but he keeps putting his own faults in other people. It's ridiculous. It's time for Jim Lee to step up to the plate, be held accountable for the decisions of his editorial staff and his creators. And it's about time that Tom King be gone from DC Cop. Just yesterday, Doc and I talked about the worst comics of last week. Shockingly, Tom King made the list there. If you're interested and you want to know some of the other things that Tom King has done to ruin the DC Comics universe, check this out. We cover Batman Catwoman number nine from last week.